<clears throat> Mr. Cardia, can you share your screen? Yep. One moment. There you go. Okay, you in the you in the house? You guys can follow me? You know what I'm saying? You can hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna type in uh strong. I don't know why that word comes to mind right now. I'm not smelling anything. You never know. Okay, strong. I'm going to go and come up with a typeface that denotes or that feels like strong. And I would say that that would be a very thick black typeface. So where are we at? Let's go and look up a sans serif font. And this one is Arial Black, which is a banned font in my class, so I can't use that one. Let's see what Helvetica News got. Do they have a bold version? It got bold. All right, that's good enough for us. Okay, so I've got the word strong right here. And again, because I just clicked and typed, I'm able to go and create the word and being able to skew this, stretch it, etc., versus it being a click and a drag to create a type box that's used for column or body copy for magazine or articles or poster uh, information. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Object and show you these options. This Make with Warp option under Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Warp used to be another program in the 90s and Illustrator bought it. Adobe bought it and put it into Illustrator. This used to be a small little independent program. So if you look under Style, you've got all these different options. I like the flag one on occasion too and I just go off and on preview. The bend can be either more dynamic or very subtle. You can move the distortion like this or like that. And so strong, I think I want to go with a fish eye on strong. Well, no, not a fish. Let's go with inflate. Because inflate makes it look like you're puffed up, like your, your muscles, right? Is that something that might work? That might work. Say OK to that. Now that I've got this, I get my white arrow. Pardon me? With my white arrow, you can see that there's information here. I click this and I can do this. Grab handles. Okay, so you guys can see that because I'm doing it all in capital letters, the top line that you know is called a cap line and I'll show you that we've talked about this briefly before you put your baseline which is where your letters sit on top of on the flat so if you notice again the subtlety of typography is where there's a curvature involved it's always going to protrude above and below to compensate for size because if I go and I select the O and I do a slight modification on the size of the O so that it just touches the baseline the same as the other ones, it won't let me even do it. It's saying, nope, we're not going to do that. Okay, let's show my options and I'm going to baseline shift it up one and go down again and go down one more time. Let's go 0.5 on it, 88.5. Okay, so, oh man, that didn't, yeah, it is. There's the baseline, there's the cap line. Now, from a distance, does the O look too small? Does the O look too small? What do you think? Look at the difference. Can you tell? Can you tell, folks? I, 
need somebody to tell me something. Can you tell? Thanks, class. No, not really. Okay. Trust me. If I get the S and do the same thing, watch this. Letter I, you get the eyedropper, and you can grab, you're supposed to be able to grab the same type. There it is. It's not working, though. What was it, 88.5? Baseline of one. Doesn't the S look wrong? Do you guys think the S looks wrong? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that's why you compensate by having the letter forms go above that cap line. Because that needs to, because there's more in contact with the R or the T and this barely would touch it, and it looks so too small. So that's how people visually compensate. That's why a lot of people, when they're measuring stuff, this is the thing, you guys. God gives you a lot of talents you don't even realize you have. Like this, to go and measure, to see if it's centered up. People will do this. Okay? It's up against the flat here, and it's touching here, therefore it's right. But all the best designers I know used to tell me, you got to trust your eyes. Don't trust the math, because the math is going to be absolute, but you're not compensating for the type box negative space right here or here, because people would go and use the machine to align things. They think, well, their, their logic, it doesn't look right, but the math is right. So I don't care if it doesn't look right, because I know it's right. What's more correct when you're talking about visualization? Does it look right, or is it mathematically right? It needs to look right. Let me show you another example of this. And I never used to be into typography, because I just didn't, I was too focused on drawing and painting stuff. Bank of the West. Didn't I show you guys this one before? Bank of the West. There was one day my mom and dad, we went to go to the bank and I got out of the car to take a look because 